Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over how to find your delta T um, from an enthalpy change when you mix two different solutions. So an example problem would be something like this. 100 milliliters of 0.5 molarity HCl is mixed with 300 milliliters of 0.1 M barium hydroxide. The enthalpy change, delta H for this reaction, is negative 118 kilojoules per mole. Initial temps of both solutions are 25 degrees Celsius. Find the final temperature. So the first thing you want to do anytime you have two solutions is write your chemical reaction. So this would be HCl plus barium hydroxide. That's an acid-base reaction, so it's going to make water. Barium chloride, BaCl2. That is aqueous because it has chlorine. Anything that has chlorine is aqueous. Water is liquid. These are both aqueous because I gave you molarities. And they're both strong acid, strong base. Okay. Balance. Um, I'll need a two here and a two here. I like to go ahead and find which reactant is your limiting reactant first. So HCl, 0.5 M, HCl equals moles over 0.1 liter, 100 milliliters. That means there's 0.05 moles of HCl, two moles HCl, so two moles water. You don't have to solve for water. That's just the reactant I solve for. That would make 0.05 moles of H2O. And then I'll check the barium hydroxide it has a 0.1 molarity over 0.3 liters. Um, 0.1 times 0.3 is 0.03. And solve for the same product. So this is a 1 to 2 ratio. One mole barium hydroxide to two moles water equals 0 0.06 moles of water. The reactant that makes the least amount of product is HCl. Okay. So there is my limiting reactant. Next, I'm trying to find final temperature. Um, if there's a temperature change, the only way you can get final temperature is doing an MCAT, MC delta T. Um, I know my initial temp, so I'm just trying to find that final temp. I don't have a Q, though, and because this is, again, temperature changes are always for the surroundings, I need how much heat did the surroundings either absorb or lose. Um, I need to find a Q for the surroundings. Well, I don't have anything about the surroundings. But I do have my moles of HCl, and I have the enthalpy change for this reaction, and I have a chemical equation. And so I can kind of combine those things to get a joule value, because the enthalpy value is the only thing that has joules in it. So what do I know? I know that my limiting reactant is HCl, and there are 0.05 moles of HCl. Um, this unit is technically kilojoules per mole reaction. So let's look at my chemical equation. Every one reaction will react two moles of HCl. So to cancel out units, if this is moles of HCl, I'm going to put two moles HCl at the bottom. And there are two moles of HCl in every one mole reaction. OK? Now, my kilojoule unit is 118 kilojoules per mole reaction. So all of your units cancel, and you're left with your kilojoule value, which is going to be negative 2.95 kilojoules. And so that is for this system. Um, that is the heat that the system lost because it's an exothermic reaction it gave off heat i want it to be for surroundings so 
you need to take that kilojoule value and to change the sign, so plus 2.95 kilojoules, and I want to make it joules. So 1 kJ, 1,000 joules. Um, that is 2,950 joules is the Q for my system. Okay, now that I have a Q, I can find a final temperature through an... So Q equals MC delta T, 2950 joules equals for mass, because these solutions are essentially all water, we assume the density of water, which is one gram per milliliter. So 100 milliliters is 100 grams, 300 milliliters, 300 grams. You combine them, that is 400 grams. We use the specific heat of water. 4.184 joules times, there we go, joules per gram times degrees Celsius. And delta T is T final minus initial. Initial is 25 degrees Celsius. So this will allow me to solve for my final temperature. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is multiply those two. 400 times 4.184 is... 673.6 times TF minus 25. You have to distribute. This needs to go to both. So 2950 is going to equal 1673.6 TF minus this times 25 is a negative 41840. I want to isolate my TF, so I'm going to add this number to both sides. That gives us 44790 equals 1673.6 TF. To isolate TF, those are being multiplied. Divide both sides by 1673.6. We get the final temperature is... 26.8 degrees Celsius, which means temperature increased. The temperature of these surroundings should increase because it's an exothermic reaction. It told us that from the beginning. Exothermic reactions release heat to the surroundings, which is why this number makes sense. Um, I hope this video was helpful.